This is a Rolex 16233. It was worn until it fell off the owner's wrist. You can see that the pins come out of the clasp. Now there's quite a lot of dirt on this. Um, the owner did wear it regularly for all types of tasks including gardening and decorating. And um, it's had quite a bit of abuse. Now the pin itself has just worn so that it uh, it just drops straight out the hole. There's no damage to the clasp at all, so we should be able to repin that quite easily. Um, there is some stretch in the Jubilee bracelet, but it's not terrible, so we're going to leave that because it's quite a uh, time-consuming and therefore costly thing to, to correct. Um, under the pin here, you'll see as I, I take off the bracelet, there's quite a lot of dirt inside the lugs. Um, these older Rolexes without the solid end links, they are prone to collecting quite a lot of dirt in there. So if you, if you do buy a second-hand uh, used watch, it's, it's always a good idea to get the bracelet off and have it properly cleaned. Um, a bit unpleasant to wear that when it's a, especially when it's your own wrist, it's unpleasant. But from somebody else's wrist, it's a, it's something you really want to have cleaned before you um, proceed wearing the watch especially with a Jubilee bracelet because they do store dirt all the way down the, the middle of the bracelet as well. As you see as we take these uh, spring bars out, this one is uh, stuck by the dirt, it's held fast in place. I think we're going to need some pliers for that. And if you're going to do this, you need to hold it in the right place so you don't spring the tear the spring bar in half. There we go. There we are. That's out. Now when we go through the ultrasonic cleaner, all that dirt will be removed. But I do sometimes like to remove some of it before opening the case back because it's not nice to get all that dirt inside your movement. And um, I imagine the other side of the bracelet is just the same. So let's pop that off and have a quick look. Yeah, yeah, quite a lot of dirt in there. Yeah, this is one of the reasons that regular servicing is a good idea if you watch. A lot of um, Rolexes, they will run for 20, 30 years even without service. And they'll keep going and going and going until they eventually grind to a halt. But that does cause a lot of wear on your movement to the point where some 30 year old Rolex as we're seeing they're very very difficult to get them running accurately because there's just so much wear on the wheels and pinions parts that are no longer available the watches the value of the watches therefore suffers if you'd have kept that serviced for the last 30 years then the watch would be worth more because it can be kept in, in properly running condition and over the years the, the increase in the value of the watch more than pays for your servicing costs yeah, a bit like your car it's, it's a good idea to keep it as a pre preventative measure especially with Rolex because the parts are so expensive if you're talking movements that use um, more common movements uh, the parts can be a few pounds even so here, this watch uh, we're putting on to this is our um, testing machine uh, Time McGrath so we got it sent to 28 800 beats per hour and uh, there we are the watch is not running well at all so we're losing 95 seconds a day amplitude of 168 degrees and we're looking to get that amplitude above 270 by the end of this service and here there's a problem this is what eventually brought the customer in for a service a problem in his keyless works his hands just won't set there we are you see that there's a, definitely a fault there on that handset it's either doing nothing or it's juddering. Date is working occasionally. But yeah, that, that's going to be a fault in the keyless works. Probably a snap tooth. Other than that, visually, the watch is not in bad condition. I think it will clean up nicely. Inside, Rolex movements always look excellent the rhodium plating on Rolex movements is amazing it stays bright for years and years and years even without service just get those little bits of dirt 
and see the last watchmaker to work on the watch would be 2004 I think December 2004 We're in the UK so that would be the the 5th of December now the first thing to check when you're looking at a Rolex is the bearing it goes quite often yep yep too much side shake in that bearing I'll try and get an angle where you can see it right we'll just put a little pressure on there and you'll see the excess movement see that lifting up on the opposite side now that will cause your uh, rotor bearing to touch these parts of the case around the edge uh, you see here especially there's a black mark that's where that rotor's uh, been touching the outside of the movement now that causes um, firstly it causes inefficient winding so your watch will stop on your wrist but secondly it also causes the rotor to impact against the movement and that removes the rhodium plate and puts metal filings into your movement it just makes the problem worse right so here we're on the microscope you see all these uh, th there is some dirt around there but there's a lot of chips around that cyclops and around the edge of the glass so it didn't look too bad when we we're looking at it but when you get closer to it you'll see all of this in there and uh, of course any chips along the edge of your watch that's where your seal is and if you start getting chips that go into your seal you've got water in your watch before you know it so it is a good idea every now and then to just run your nail around the edge of your watch and you'll feel these even if you won't see them yeah. and there's quite a few on this sapphire is very res resistant to abrasion but the, the trade off with that is it's, it's easier to chip so yeah you will get chips all around the edge so yep, I think a new glass is warranted on that as well. And let's have a look at this case thread. Yeah, it's not in good, in bad condition, but it is uh, quite dirty. Again, that will stop you screwing your crown properly home. All those bits of skin in there, and it will stop you from creating a waterproof seal when you screw your crown down. Right, let's have a look in there. Yep, that seal doesn't look bad. That's okay. Now, let's have a look at the case. See, it didn't look in bad condition but when we're under the microscope you can see the surface of the metal quite a lot of scratches and uh, quite a lot of pitting so we can refinish the case um, we leave this to the customer's discretion this customer wanted their watch to look as close to new as possible so we will um, take that top surface down and, and repolish right now we're into the stripping the movement the crown comes out first then you screw the case um, retaining screws downwards and that will allow you to turn the watch so the case um, screws line up with the holes and you can just pop the movement straight out there we are so the dial is in excellent condition let's put this away so it doesn't get separated from the rest of the watch and we can carry on with the movement some of that dirt we don't want anything getting onto the dial right so I like to wait until all the the hands are, are lining up especially in this case because we can't move them so we'll try and get the hack mechanism in a good place to be able to uh, lift it slightly there we go we managed to move the hands so I like the hands to line up so that when we take um, there we go stop it when we take the hands off they're all, all in, a, in quite a nice position to get to them all so we can take all three at once now um, the best way to do this I was shown this by a former manager of the Rolex workshop you tear a bag and lay it over the hands and dial get that in there and then you can use hand levers and this is the best way to take hands and dial off a watch without damage everything's properly protected If you, there are some um, things you can buy different types of hand removing things I've seen all of them damage hands and dials apart from this method all right let's get the uh, let's get the dial off and then we can have a look at that um, setting lever mechanism
yeah, that's good enough. Here we are, closer up. And these four blue screws secure the, the date plate. So we take all four of those out. And that'll allow us to lift up the date plate and get a look at this setting uh, mechanism and find out what's causing that hand setting fault. nice and clean. I like to clean as we work. Um, it's more important when you're putting the watch back together but when you're stripping too it's a good idea just to keep everything as clean as possible. Tiniest little specks of dirt will stop a watch so that's basically what we're doing when we're servicing a watch is uh, replacing the oils but making sure everything's as clean as possible. It's amazing what will get inside a movement even an oyster case where it's waterproof you'll get dirt and hairs inside somehow get all these out of the way. Now we need to get this um, plate off. Just do the cannon pinion before we forget. This is a cannon pinion removal tool. Basically you clamp it over it, press a lever and there we go, it's off. That's the best way to get the cannon pinion off without causing any damage to it. Right, now once we get this plate off, this is the train that controls the keyless work so this should be where we find our fault. If the camera focuses, there we go. take all these off as well have a proper look at everything under there and you look at the plate the, the top of the plate with the pearl large finish and the rhodium plating is absolutely beautiful and this is the thing I love about high quality watches like the only people will see this is the watchmaker but still the efforts put in to get that high level of finish that one off here we are so that's our minute wheel and these two wheels here they're setting wheels and there we are this one I'll try and get a, a close-up of it see if I can get it to focus I don't know if you can see that but there are two teeth missing and that's obviously what's caused our fault three teeth missing so yeah we'll, we'll get that a new one popped in and that will that will solve that fault. Other than that, the watch looks to be in excellent condition. Nothing wrong with that one at all. So yeah, so that's obviously caused by something blocking the train. And then the owners use the hand setting and it's just sheared it off. So who knows what blocked it and what caused that and how. But again, another reason to keep your watch properly serviced. carry on stripping the watch here we are underneath the uh, train bridge get that one off again beautiful standard of finishing to Rolex watches pop that in there I like to put the more delicate parts in their own protective basket inside the cleaning basket because I have occasionally had pivots break and things like that so we put them in their own basket which prevents that just another layer of protection while they're spinning around in the ultrasonic cleaner and there we are all that in there I've got the pallets in there as well and a few of the smaller bits and springs that could work their way out of the baskets yeah, so just a little bit more to strip down and then that can go in the cleaning machine um, Rolex in their technical documents they do prescribe a pre-cleaning with the movement in one piece then strip the movement and then clean again before rebuilding now I don't like to clean with it in one piece because the inside of Rolex mainspring barrels has a very thick black grease and I like to get that out in the most uh, and keep the cleaning fluids cleaner so I, I clean twice basically in pieces rather than doing a, a cleaning hole. Now obviously here we are in the cleaning machine, this is a sped up. So this process takes half an hour but you see it there in a few seconds. Right, here 
here's the uh, underneath the bezel got some dirt again under there it's amazing and uh, near the seal it's gone brittle and yep that should be a nice soft seal but over time it's gone hard and is just shattering as we touch it so yeah that's a that w that watch was about to give up water resistancy water resistance excuse me um, it, yeah it wouldn't have kept water out for longer so here we are in the ultrasonic you see this is fresh water and detergent and it's just getting browner and browner and browner again this is sped up so this process takes about 20 minutes but we sped it up to to give you an idea of what it looks like but yeah this uh just all that dirt coming out of the uh case and bracelet and that's looking much brighter already so yeah we'll just get those parts out now it'll be polished and then cleaned again to get the polish off but we see in there all that dirt gone from inside the clasp and let's have a look at um, one of the uh, end links and you remember they were absolutely full and there they are as I say if you've bought a watch second hand it's always a good idea to get this process done right now, I mentioned Rolex have a thick black grease inside the mainspring barrel so it's a, a malib molybdenum grease and you have three dots on the inside of the barrel and it helps um, lubricate the barrel wall so that when your watch becomes fully wound you can't feel any difference in the winding when you're doing manual winding because it allows the, the mainspring to slip along the inside of the barrel while still keeping the power going through the watch so it's important to, to get this right yeah. now this is a mainspring winding tool so we can put that genuine Rolex mainspring in the watch It's going in nicely. There's a lot of life left in that mainspring. There's a lot of power going through that. The alloy on these um, mainsprings, the modern ones, is excellent quality. When we work on some older watches, once you take the mainspring out, you see it's set to the size of the barrel, so it stops providing power. But modern mainsprings, the the alloy is amazing. It just keeps uh, it keeps its original shape for decades. There we go. It's quite a lot of power on that spring. That should provide a good amplitude. Just disconnect it from the tool. This is tricky because you don't it's springing out. There we go. Now we can just pop it back into the barrel. And that's a lovely clean and re-oiled Rolex mainspring barrel. It's the best place to start a service is with good power going through the watch. Uh, if you've got good power going through the watch, then uh, as long as the rest of the parts are clean and free from wear, then you're going to have a good result. Okay, just clean the tools. We just put a little bit of a lubricant on the the parts of the barrel where the arbor touches, so the arbor is free to turn. Just a, a couple of little drops. Now we can put the arbor back in and close the barrel. I normally like to do these jobs um, while uh, giving the. Uh, plate an extra clean just to make sure everything's uh, nice and clean but this one because I've been recording it's been going through the it's gone through three or four times already through the cleaner while I've been setting up so there's no need to do that there you go just put that home make sure it sits nicely the spring in the right place it's always a good idea to wear gloves when you're working on on this type of thing as well because you can handle the parts a little bit. It's very difficult to do this with just tweezers. Um, it's nice to be able to handle it and not leave fingerprints and skin and things like that. So yeah, a pair of gloves is a good idea. 
get that lid from the barrel. There's a bit of wear on the inside of the lid from where the mainspring's been rubbing against it, but it's nice and clean and it's uh, still in good order. Pop it. Give it a little clean, make sure it's all. Yep. The last few bits of grease off there. It is, this has been through three times through the cleaning machine, but just make sure it's properly clean. Give it a quick rinse. There we go. And we can just shut that. Get rid of that excess fluid because we don't want that getting onto our um, spring. So just let that dry. And there we are. Now it's important to make sure the barrel's closed properly all the way around. You can do this with your fingers. I like to do it with my fingers because you can get a good feel for it when it's properly closed so you don't get the barrel lids rubbing on your plates. There we are. And we're carrying on with uh, rebuilding the watch. putting the pallets in place. I like to hold them in place with a toothpick until the screws are in. Once you've made sure that the pivots are lined up in the jewel holes, that way it doesn't pop out and get uh, broken when you tighten the screw. As I say, cleaning as we go, make sure there's uh, nothing in there that shouldn't be. And uh, this point, now we've got the pallets in place, we can get our um, balance wheel back in, put some power on the watch, and then do an after service uh, test to see what uh, improvements we've had from the, the cleaning. Even before the watch is fully assembled and oiled, you can get an idea if you're on the right track and whether you should proceed or not, or whether you should go back a few steps and, and look for any potential faults. Now this is taking a lot of wines without um, self-starting. So that suggests to me that it's out of beat. If you start getting beat errors above about 0 0.6, the watch won't self-start. And that means it's not running at its most efficient. We want a, a beat error as low as possible. That means the escapement's all in a nice straight line, properly set up, and it will run as easily as it can. I'll just pop a screw in there so we can do a test. There we are, and the other side. Just make sure that's tight because you can't do an accurate test if it's not properly tightened because you can get a different amplitude once the screws are in place. So what we're looking for here is, is the amplitude more than the timekeeping and the beat error. We just want to make sure that amplitude is up so that we, we're going to be able to regulate properly. Um, you need to know the powers going through the watch before you can regulate. It's the most important thing because you cannot regulate accurately under 270 degrees. Another part of that is to make sure that your balance jewels are properly oiled. So we just pop open this ink block, get that spring out of the way, lift the spring out and give it a nice fresh oil. And we do that on both sides of the uh, balance to make sure we're getting a, an accurate trace. There we go. I use Rodico to lift the, the jewels out. And that um, second part of the jewel will have to come out too. There we are. We'll clean and oil those and pop them back in. And there we go, there's our trace. We've got that amplitude at 280 odd. So yeah, that's uh, that's not bad at all. I just adjust it. That's me moving the, the cleaning machine that's caused that. So we'll let it settle down again. adjust that beat error. 
There we go. Just going to uh, try and get that a bit better. So now that That's not far off, but I like it a bit better than that, so we'll have another go. Do a bit of fine tuning and get it a bit lower. There we go. That's getting a bit worse. We go back the other way. 0.2. No, we need it better than that. And we just want one straight line where everything, instead of the two lines that show the two different jewels, we want one. There we are. You see, when you've got it right, you can see the difference. One straight, perfect line. And that is a properly regulated watch. So we've got that 270 amplitude, losing half a second a day, or less, and no beat error whatsoever. So that is perfectly set up. Absolutely perfect. 0, 0.0 now. There we are. Time to rebuild the watch. This is uh, pressing the hands on. It's important to make sure the hands don't touch each other. I like to use this tool because it helps you to put everything on perfectly parallel. Every hand should be parallel to each other on the dial. And there we go. Passes nicely. So on to the case and bracelet. So this is a diamond file. This will help us take out the worst of the scratches from the clasp. That's typically where a lot of the damage is. So we'll, uh, we'll get rid of the deepest scratches. Staying away from that Rolex emblem because you don't want to wipe that um, emblem out. So this, there is a skill to this. A lot of watches come back over polished. We don't like to do that, but we can get a good result, get the watch looking close to new as possible without removing any details or changing shapes of cases. And if there is a, a, a part of it that's just too deep, we'll just say to the customer, if we remove this, it's going to change the shape of your case. So we try and strike a happy balance. We'll also listen to the customer. If they, if they don't want their watch polishing at all, we're happy to, happily to, to accommodate that and leave the patina. A lot of customers do want the age-related marks to remain, so yeah, we're happy to do that. We don't swap dials or anything like that as part of services as well, which a lot of customers like. There we are. So we've polished that, taped it off, and now we put the brushed finish on the outside of the case. And then when we remove that heatproof tape, you get the two-tone finish polished down the middle and brushed on the outside. There we are. And there it is, drying. It's important to properly dry the watch. If you don't do this step, you can get mist inside your case. So we make sure it's half an hour on the dryer. And while that's happening, we can repair that clasp. So I've got a, a one mil pin in there. It's going to drive that completely home. And uh, the second pin actually came out in the ultrasonic cleaner. That was loose too, so we're doing both. So this is just one mil steel, which we'll drive in. And then we'll cut it to shape, to fit, and smooth it off. So we've got a lot of life left in this bracelet yet. That's looking much better. So all we got to do now is snip those down. Got a good pair of cutters for this because this is hardened steel. So there we are. That's as close as we'll go, and we'll get rid of the rest with the file. Again, I'm using the diamond file because this is hardened steel. We've used hardened steel because it's resistant to wear, so the repair will last longer than if we used a soft steel. Now we press the case back on using the Horitech press and that's how we get the watertight seal around the, the new glass here we are in the pressure tester it's always best to use a wet pressure tester a lot of people use um, the dry testers but they're just not suitable for some of the jobs that I've seen people use them for because you're measuring the crystal flex a lot of crystals won't flex on divers watches here we are this inner wall finder 
and watch is looking nice and fresh and it's uh, back ready after testing for the customer's wrist here's the finished result it is looking much much improved it's a lot cleaner and it's in good order inside all working properly with nice fresh oils keeping excellent time so yeah a good result we can see the date change this is the watch recorded just as it's going through midnight and we're looking for that date to change right on cue from 16 to 17 there it goes 16.17 